Well, I don't know whether you remember if you were here, but the last time we talked about preoccupation and just that danger that we can get preoccupied and sometimes lose our way in terms of following God. Well, this week we're going to talk about persistence, persistence in prayer and all that Jesus has to say about that. So I'm back, I think, in August again, so I'm going to get you to guess. I won't ask you now, but I might just use a third word that starts with P as we think about what God calls us to do. But today it's about persistence. And we know that persistence means sticking through something, staying steadfast. And certainly this is what Jesus wants us to do, to be persistent in prayer. And we really need to understand that virtue these days in a very instant society where we expect everything to happen yesterday. It's really easy for us to give up just to walk away when we're not getting the results we want in the moment. In fact, W.C. Fields, he basically said, if at first you don't succeed, don't be a darn fool, give up. <laughs> well, that's the exact opposite of what Jesus is trying to say in this text. And our culture really needs to hear this, that there is a wonderful quality in persistence, and especially when it comes to prayer. And so he tells us this parable of this widow who has some adversary that's mistreating her and she goes to this judge and Jesus describes this judge as someone who doesn't love God and doesn't even care what anybody thinks. And this woman just keeps coming and coming and nagging and nudging and she keeps at this judge to the point where finally the judge says, I don't care about God, I don't care about what people think, but I've had it with this woman. And so he gives her what she needs in terms of help with this adversary. And, and Jesus says then, this is what it's like to pray in persistent ways. Now just rest with that for a while. So in this parable, is Jesus trying to say to us that you know, if you just keep praying hard enough, you can wear God down? Is that what he's saying? Or is he trying to say, just keep at it till you finally get God's attention? Is that what he's trying to say? Or is he saying, you know, just go at this wonderful, great creator until somehow this creator finally pays attention to little old me or you? Is that what Jesus is saying? Of course not. What Jesus is trying to say to us is that an unprincipled judge was so rotten and so miserable, can't you just see the opposite? That God, who's loving and caring and quick to be there for us, can't you imagine how he might respond? If this judge can cave and give in, imagine a God who doesn't need to do that, who loves us already. And so Jesus is trying to help us to understand how responsive God is when we come to God in prayer. Not like that nasty old judge, but rather this wonderful, gracious, loving God who comes to us over and over again. But if you're like me, I sometimes wonder about prayer, even still. When we have those difficult moments where nothing seems to be taking shape, can it feel like our prayers are just kind of bouncing off the ceiling? Can it feel sometimes that no matter how many times we ask, it seems as though God isn't listening to us? And I think that can be particularly true when we're in the midst of injustice. I remember in an old, my own personal experience, that we had the identical twin sons that were running in opposite directions. I had my mother living with us as well who had Alzheimer's and was quite confused. We changed congregations. I'm minister's wife at this point. So now it meant getting my kids all wrapped up in hopefully seconds outfits in case something could happen. 
We'd have to drive my mom the opposite direction so that her sister could look after her in order that we could go all that mileage to get to the church where we believe God called us. And it went on and on and on. We put our house up for sale. Of course, it was during when the interest rates were at 18%. Some of us are old enough to remember those moments. And it sat and it didn't move. And I pray, and every time I put the boys in the car, and my mom, and there's just, okay, God, we know this is what you want for us. Could we just unload this house? And it wasn't happening. And one day, I was spent. And I still remember marching to the living room couch, flopping into it while finally everyone was asleep to say, where are you? Are you not listening? If you wanted this for us, hello, was maybe not even that kind. And, and there was this sense of God still seeming to be silent. And then one day it did so. And it was the perfect timing. It was the right timing for a variety of reasons. And then it all became clear that it wasn't about my results when I wanted them but it was what God had in store for us instead. So sometimes we can just feel like we're not being heard, but it is a question of timing. But I will tell you that I can't to this day answer where God might have been when we visited an island where people were already almost starving because they were in India on a, a remote island it had taken the missionaries that were working with them 11 years to get people to work together to do their, their gardening because that just wasn't what they would do in that particular culture. And then one day the rains hit and suddenly people began to know that this was very different. One man even described standing on his roof trying to keep all the thatched roof down because the wind was getting stronger and then the rain really came. And he gathered as many as he could. They hid in a concrete school, the only concrete building on the island. And the men held up picnic tables up against the windows. And that's the only thing that saved the 25 people that were in there. The rest of the island was wiped out. And I have to say there are moments where I still say, God, what can be learned through all of this? How do we understand your presence in the midst? And so we can sometimes struggle in our prayer life, and we really need to understand God's timing and God's ways. Prayer isn't always easy to understand, especially in those moments. It's like a, a sheep farmer who was worried about his sheep. They were, they were moaning. They were so thirsty. And a, a brand new minister, young and excited, went out to his field and said, do you want me to pray for rain? And the farmer, with great rage, said, if God can't hear these sad little moaning things, why do you think God would listen to you? Those are honest, hard questions that we sometimes ask about prayer. And if we can really identify sometimes with that widow who seems to have to go after it over and over again in order that justice can be accomplished. So is prayer about wearing God down till God answers? Is prayer about praying for things that we need and want now? Is prayer about how we are able to persist to the point where God answers those prayers? Is it that? Or is Jesus saying something totally different? If you go to the deeper meaning in this text, there's an interesting twist. You see, we're so quick to identify with the widow. What if Jesus is saying that God is the widow and that we're the hard judge? What if Jesus is trying to help us to learn something very different about prayer here? The Bible is full of all kinds of images of God in different kinds of ways. And, and we shouldn't be shocked that God might be painted by Jesus in this very 
passive, this very vulnerable role. You know the stories. You know the times when God would do negotiation, like with Abraham. You know the times when God came in an infant form, helpless. You know God as one who suffered on the cross. Why would it be shocking for us to hear that Jesus is saying God is actually the widow? God is the one who comes and persists until we finally hear and offer justice. Just think about that image in your own mind of God nudging you, pestering you, calling you, and for you to be sitting back on your nice, luxurious pillows and totally ignoring the call of God. We can do that sometimes. We can really not hear God's call when it comes to us. And yet God doesn't give up. The widow doesn't give up. She persists. She keeps at it. She's there even before the, the person is there that is, is trying to hear the request. God is present waiting for us, nudging us, encouraging us, inviting us, maybe even pressing us into the kind of life that is loving and just and caring for other people. You see, prayer is not at all about trying to get God's attention, but it's rather listening to God who's already there. God is already present to you before you're even paying attention. It's not my initiative when I decide to pray then things should happen. Rather, it's, it's my response to a God who is already initiating justice and peace and love. It's not sort of magically harnessing or bridling the power of God. And it's really about plugging in to the love of God, plugging in to God's grace that is already available to us if we would just open our eyes, if we would just listen. Prayer is not at all about manipulating God into a particular kind of answer so that our desires get met. It's all about connecting to this God who is present to us and loving us day in and day out. What Jesus is trying to teach us here is that prayer is like an open channel where we make ourselves more aware of God's presence in our lives, that God is teaching us and calling us and wooing us and loving us. And it's for us to stop be hiding behind our defenses, but rather to allow God to fully come to us. There's a wonderful quote from Gregory Baum. He taught at U of T, and I had the chance to, to have him as a professor. And this is what he says about prayer. He says, what happens when I pray is to begin with an encroachment of the love of God that comes upon my defenses and my hard heart and my laggard will. Just hear that quote, that God the widow comes and it's like an encroachment uh, and the love of God coming into our heart. It's not an interesting kind of description. See, prayer is about listening. It's about opening ourselves up. It's about being in relationship. It's about recognizing the presence of God in everything we're doing. Whether we're sitting there working at the grocery list or whether we're visiting someone who's grieving. It can be that we're there mopping the floor or, or writing a sermon. God is present to us all the time just kind of tapping on our hearts, saying, pay attention, be aware, experience the love, hear the call, and be willing to respond. You see, God calls us to be persistent in prayer, 
not to wear God out, not to get what we really want. It's all about relationship. It's all about a loving connection with God who is present in and through us and around us all the time so that we can receive those gifts when they come to us. It's about being constantly attuned to God's call for love and justice and peace. And it's being present to God morning, noon, and night. Every breathing moment is prayer. Every time we make ourselves aware of God in the moment, we are engaged in prayer. And we are seeking God's call to be engaged in the world. God who cares about the poor. God who cares about the crying of our environment. God who is with the marginalized and the poor comes to us like the widow who comes to the judge and says to us, be my agents, spread my love. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you are present to me and you need to let my light shine. So all throughout this day, whatever you're doing, keep an eye on just that sense that, that your channels are open to God. Be aware of the way God can use your gifts when you least expect it. And just know that if you stay in that state of openness to God, God will minister to your hearts and God will call you to send that love out into the world. And to God be all the glory. Amen.